I know what you're gonna say. We've happened to find the most beige vehicle you'll ever buy. And it's true, it is. The most popular color you can ever get when you go to a Toyota dealership is beige, but that does not take away from the fact that this is quite an incredible car. Our spotlight is on this 1999 Lexus LS 400. There is more than just a beige paint to it because we're gonna be showing you everything about this car, taking you for a drive and going over what made this car compete with the likes of BMW and Mercedes at the turn of the millennium. The second generation Lexus LS400 began production for the 1995 model year and ended in 2000. We're looking at a 1999, which makes this a Series 4 with the chassis code UCF20. The Series 4 came with quite a few changes for the facelift, including a redesigned front end with updated hood, fenders, grille, bumper, and lights. Xenon headlights were standard for Canadian market models. Lexus also introduced their variable valve timing system known as VVTi for the LS400 along with a boost in power and torque, along with a 5-speed automatic transmission over the 4-speed found in the Series 3 and older. Plenty of other features were added with the update, but we'd be here for an hour going over them in more detail, so I suggest visiting LexLS.com for a complete rundown of the changes throughout the years. Up front we find bi-xenon headlights and lower fog lights. The quarter lamps are cosmetic for North American models, but can be retrofitted to act as running or quartering lights like those found on the Japanese domestic models. The headlight washer system is a Canadian-only option for North American models. Out back we find the unmistakable LS400 taillights, but no power or soft closing trunk on this model. Looking inside we find a small tool kit with a decent amount of trunk space. Like most luxury cars at the time, you can remotely open all the windows by holding the key fob's unlock button or by using the lock on the door, which can open or close the windows. Like many Japanese cars from the era, the rear window doesn't open fully and has an angle at their lowest position. Now these pins on the window are part of the guiding system to help the windows open and close properly. Notice the rear window doesn't include a brake and is just one large piece of glass? That's pretty unique to the LS400. The interior of the car matches the exterior paint color, but has definitely held up well over the past 17 years. The driver's door has a window switch and mirror controls. All four windows are automatic up and down. At the top we find the two driver memory settings, along with the shoulder belt height adjustment. 12-way driver seat adjustments are located at the bottom of the seat. There's a lot going on on the left side of the steering wheel. The gauge cluster brightness and alarm status is located near the cluster followed by the headlight and steering wheel adjustment along the steering column. To the left are the power mirror controls, a coin tray, parking brake release, and the fuel door and trunk release buttons. There's a small vent in the center pointing towards the driver's legs, along with a secret vent under the steering wheel. There are 19 air vents in total on this car. The steering wheel automatically adjusts when the key is inserted into the ignition and features cell phone controls on the left, cluster computer controls on the right, and cruise control settings behind. Lexus has been using an electroluminescent gauge cluster for quite some time now. They're dark when turned off and come to life when the ignition is started. Typical cluster information is found such as fuel, speed and tachometers, and the computer readout for faults and warnings. On the right side of the steering column are the trip reset buttons and the illuminated ignition switch. Under the driver's seat is a first aid kit which is typically found on Eurospec BMWs and Mercedes. The center console might not be winning any awards for exciting design, however we continue to find the Lexus engineers everything with purpose. Up top are the center vents and hazard switch, followed by the climate control and upgraded double din head unit. The climate control system features dual zone automatic setting for both front occupants but is a unified fan speed and mode shared between both. It also features an automatic air recirculation system that can feature out unwanted outside odors. It's important to note that the clock does not turn off when the ignition is switched off, so if you plan on parking your Lexus for long periods of time, you'll want to invest in a trickle charger for your battery. Below the aftermarket head unit is the vehicle skid control system, headlight washer, and the front heated seats with the cigarette ashtray hidden underneath. The transmission can be shifted into lower gears manually and offers power and snow settings which dramatically change the feel of the car. The large leather wrapped armrest opens up to reveal a small storage area and cup holders are hidden below and pop out in a pretty unique fashion. 
The rear view mirror is auto dimming and can be turned off with the single button on the front. Lexus added a tiny sunshade above the mirror to block out as much glare as possible. Other cars likely have this, but we've only ever seen one in the Acura Vigor. The interior lighting controls, moonroof switches, and factory home link can be found above the center console. On the passenger side, we find two storage compartments. The upper one is for the six CD changer, and the bottom is a typical glove box. The front passenger has similar seat controls and door layout as the driver, but the rear seats are just as interesting as the front. Consistent with the GS400 we reviewed earlier, the rear seats are designed for maximum comfort and aren't an afterthought. Each door gets a cigarette lighter and ashtray with an automatic window switch finished in wood in leather. The rear heating controls are limited to a single on and off knob and don't include heated seats or an air conditioning option. The rear headrests can be adjusted manually for taller passengers and the center armrest drops down with two cup holders which pop out from the front. Now the rear lighting is really cool. Only the lights for the corresponding door will turn on when they're opened. You can also see that the right side lights are off when the passenger's door is open on the left. The map light button above the door turns on the map light at the back as well, but leaves the center dome light off. Now that we've covered the interior, I think it's time we finally drive this full-size luxury flagship to see how it's held up over the past 17 years. Okay, so we're driving around here now. We're uh, taking the LS400 for a spin. And the first few things that we've noticed right away is uh, sound insulation is very good. Uh, even with the uh, upgraded sort of catback exhaust on this car, you don't really hear too much of what's going on outside. You don't feel a whole lot of the road. Uh, you don't hear a whole lot of the road. And uh, overall, I mean, visibility is pretty good. That mirror seems to be a trend with these old Lexus cars is the mirror is very big. But overall, I mean, everything is very comfortable. Um, and the seats, like, I have good support at the front of my legs, which is something that's really rare. Um, I feel more in a bucket than I do on other cars. And I think I'm sitting up a little bit higher than I normally would, um, which is very different for me uh, to have that kind of feeling. But let's go uh, full throttle here. So it's by no means a fast car. And again, we've talked about that with other models especially in this category this car is not meant to go fast this is meant to go reasonable it's meant for you to be able to drive without any real effort to get the car up to speed where you need it to go uh, and to do it in a way that's also fuel efficient i was incredibly surprised that the owner of this car told me the other day that uh, doing mostly from my understanding uh, city driving but you know a, a good blend between the two and really a good uh, indication of what the typical driver would be able to do with this car he averages eight liters per hundred kilometers, which is absolutely phenomenal for a car of this size and for this year. If you think about our 2001 BMW 740 IL, it's a long wheelbase, but uh, it does like 11.1. So this is much more fuel efficient than that car and really a lot more fuel efficient than a lot of new cars that we've driven. So if you're looking for a car that is re relatively reliable, uh, looks pretty good, depending, you know, I mean, styling is certainly going to be subjective but in my opinion it's a good looking car uh, and very comfortable I think you could be able to tick off all those boxes with LS 400 steering with this is uh, well you're leaving it up to chance a little bit you know you're kind of turning it and it's just kind of going wherever it feels like and that seems to be pretty typical with these cars it's not as tight as a lot of the other cars that we've driven so you do have a little bit more of a nautical experience when driving this down the street but still it doesn't take away from really the overall feel of the car I mean you really do still have complete control over where you're going it doesn't feel like uh, you've got any issues with really where you're pointing the vehicle but it is something to note unlike a lot of the other cars even like the GS 400 which really had a tight steering this feels a lot uh, lighter and looser and that's probably because you know it is pushing a heavier car and they probably put a little bit more into the power steering components in order to make the car really feel like it doesn't need to be pushed around uh, as much as it is just driving itself for you. So this car's only done 191,000 kilometers, which really is pretty good, uh, all things considered. It's not very high up there when you consider, you know, it is almost 20 years old now. Uh, and that really just goes to show there are plenty of vehicles out there that uh, have gone high up into the mileage point. There's, you know, certainly one specific LS400 that's, uh, especially at this point, probably at the million mile mark, but uh, actually the goal for the owner of this car is to get it up to 500,000. 
and uh, you can check out doubleclutch.ca. They're the guys who've bought this car. Actually, they uh, they had the 560 SEL that we filmed a little while ago as well. So if you are interested to find out what's going on with this car, it is one of the rare opportunities where we've met uh, an owner of something that we've been able to feature where they're also doing similar things to what we're doing. So head over to doubleclutch.ca and you can follow what's going on with the car. I'm telling you, these cars, uh, I, I can't think of something that's more reliable than this. Uh, a bicycle, walking, that's it. Those are the only two things that I think are more reliable than a Lexus LS400. So I'm in the back here now of the, uh, the LS400. And like I said, I mean, it's not a long wheelbase like the 7 Series, but even, even without the front seat being pushed all the way up, I think I'd still have quite a bit of space back here. And there are a lot of things to be able to play with. You've got a little coat rack thing here. You do have the lights and then the, the lights would come on if the doors were open. So you do have a lot of good space. And if you were a smoker back in the 90s, you do have your own ashtray and lighter. But the lighter is good because if you do have a little adapter to be able to plug in your phone, then you could certainly be charging it at the same time. You've got two little air vents in the center here to be able to blow some fresh air onto you. And uh, you have like a little map lights here as well. Like I see, you turn on the light, you have a map light. And our chauffeur <laughs> will take it up. I wasn't in sport mode when we were going before. So uh, that was the reason why the transmission was, it was still quick, but it wasn't going blistering. That's why. So you gotta put the car into sport mode and then it'll really unload that V8 engine and, uh, and get it going. You saw, that was pretty quick. And we're gonna try to get one more in there before we get back, but uh, it really is nice back here. One of the things we talked about with the GS, we weren't able to be driven in it, um, but just when I sat in it, as I mentioned, the back seats here are very comfortable. These are just as comfortable. So you can put your armrest down. There is a cup holder that is built into it. And it's like as I've mentioned with other Lexus vehicles, everything really does feel like it is designed with a specific purpose. So the armrest is actually at a good level. It's not too high, not too low. Even if you're not somebody who needs to be driven around in a car like this, the fact that you've just got the space back here, that just makes sense. It's certainly more uh, comfortable and luxurious than any of the other competition at the time, especially if you think, you know, maybe in the late 90s, Lexus wasn't fully competing yet with Mercedes. So if you look at what Acura was doing with the RL, there is no comparison. As with the other Lexus models we've covered, the biggest issue with these cars is lack of regular maintenance. The key to keeping an LS400 on the road is to perform oil changes when required and having the car's mechanics inspected when going in for service. The timing belt can be an expensive job, but will cost significantly more if the belt snaps during operation. Check for a timing belt sticker near the radiator to see if it was replaced, or get the vehicle maintenance history prior to buying. The Series 3 models can develop a power steering pump issue, so check above the starter motor for any unusual liquids, and the starter motor can be a problem in general. I've also noticed that most enthusiasts prefer the traditional suspension setup over the air suspension, as it's less costly to maintain and repair, this is typical with any air ride suspension found on luxury cars from this era. We always recommend finding the best example you can, both in conditions and the features you want. Taking the car to a trusted mechanic could mean the difference between buying a great daily driver and a nightmare of problems. Service history is always important, and if the car was maintained through a Lexus dealership, everything will be available through their system to view. Overall, the second generation Lexus LS400 is a fantastic car with tons of potential for new owners. It's the perfect mix of luxury amenities and reliable driving, and can be purchased at a very reasonable price. We recommend checking out clublexus.com for more information about the two LS and join their expanding community of Lexus and Toyota enthusiasts. Thanks for watching this episode of Test Drive Spotlight. If you have any questions about this 1999 Lexus LS400, please leave a comment below and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so already. Until next time, take care.